Hi, I'm going to do a top five feminist films. These are films with very strong female characters that don't necessarily revolve around feminism, but the women in these movies are strong, they're independent, they're smart, they don't back down from what they want out of life. So, yeah, these are the top five. Um, number one is Little Woman. This has a mother raising four daughters on her own and she's making them very, very strong people. And she's constantly, they're constantly pitting, like, erasing what feminists, what girls are supposed to do, especially in this time period where girls were expected to stay inside and sew and do housework and sit still and be pretty and marry and, you know, all the traditional stuff. Um, their mom was encouraging of them being who they are and letting them play and letting them use their imaginations and educating them and doing everything that was kind of looked down upon for her to be doing this time period where girls weren't really meant to be educated. She wanted them to be and they were and um, she supported them. Jo went off and lived on her own which was unheard of um, at the time. and. So it was just like so full of feminism, it's unbelievable. And there's a, a scene in the movie where Joe is sitting with these men and talking about women and men right to vote. Women hadn't get, got that right yet during this time period. And um, they said that women should be made to vote because they call them angels. <laughs> and Joe says, um, Women shouldn't, men don't vote because they're, they're good, they vote because they're men. And I just love that so much, like that line is so, so good. Because it's true, men didn't vote because they were good people, they voted because they were men and they had the right to vote. So. And, Women were seen as delicate and angelic and they weren't allowed to vote because they weren't seen as being good enough or tough enough. Um, so yeah, I just, I like that. Um, next is Mona Smile. This is feminism and it's great. Um, about Julia Roberts, who is an art teacher at the School for Women, and she's trying to get them out of this mindset that they have to get married, and they have to have a family, and they have to have kids. She's not saying that it, she thinks it's wrong. She just doesn't want their whole life to be that. And they're going to school, and she wants them to get educated, and she wants some of them to actually, like, use their degree that they're there for instead of just getting married and throwing it away because they feel like that's what they have to do. Um, and it also gives her a lesson too because Julia Stiles' character was, uh, wants to be a lawyer but she ends up getting married and deciding not to go to law school but she said that's what she wanted. That's what she chose and so that's this movie. It's the women getting their right to choose what they do. And if that's having a family, then that's their choice. As long as they're not feeling pressured to do it, then that was their choice. And she supported it as much as she could. Kristen Dunst was, getting, was married and the man was awful to her. And she ends up going on being living on her own at the end. So it's just... Empowering, empowering them to take their own life in their hands, and I love it. Next is National Velvet. 
Um, like not a feminist movie at all, but the mom is completely feminist, and I love her. She's just so encouraging of Velvet doing what she wants, even though she, at the time, she could have considered not able to do anything that she wanted to do. Her mom was very encouraged. She wanted to enter a horse race, and I mean, her mom didn't know she would be there on two days in the race, but her mom encouraged her to do it. He encouraged her to enter the race. He encouraged her to try and do it. And I just love it. I just love that Velvet became, was the one on the horse during the race. And she was like 12 and I just love it. I love how she was very strong and determined. And I love, I love it. Next is 9 to 5. You really can't have a feminist top five without this movie <laughs> because this is about these three women wanting equal to be treated equally in the workplace and it's just amazing. Lily, Dolly, and Jane, they were great together and they really <sighs> got their point across and it was funny and it was good. It's kind of really eye-opening too, especially now. Because you think by now a lot of this would be done, and it's not. <laughs> so it's and, um, and it's just very very well done. And then last but not least is the first wives club. These three women are the fa like feminist <laughs> to the max. I think especially Bit Bit Medler is like the ultimate queen, I, I feel. She's just like the sh one of the strongest people I've ever seen in my life. Um, but again, I'm gonna talk her Channing in it, but she's killing herself in the movie, but I love her too. I think she's very, very mostly plays very strong roles. Zizzo, top feminist character. But um, First Wife Club, about these women who their husbands uh, mistreated them, cheated on them, mostly. And are getting revenge on them by taking their money and taking their businesses. And they're very, very tough and very smart. And I just love it. I love how they get their revenge. It's not hurting them physically. It's hurting them with their money. And with because the, they, all of these women, they are responsible for their husbands being successful at their jobs. So they start taking what was what is rightfully there with the money and with the company that their husbands work at. So it's just wonderful and I love it. So those are my top five feminist films. Um if you can think of I'm sure I know I have more than this in my collection, but if you can think of any you're in your own, please leave them down in the comments or leave a video response because I don't want to tell. That is Goodbye.